So now we are to part four of our problem. Part four is solve the differential equation. Here is our differential equation. And remember that in the last part we found t, and we're going to put both forms up. We found t was equal to the rate of decrease times z minus z1 plus t1. And then we actually substituted our values into that equation. So that the rate of decrease was this in Kelvin versus meters. And then also, we had also determined T2 in the last part. And it's important to remember that Z1 and T1 are related by this equation, so that if I substitute Z1, I get T1. And if I substitute Z2 here, I get D2 here. We're going to look at this one, because that's usually the way it's solved in books. But you should keep in mind that these are actual numbers. So what is our differential equation when we substitute this for t, we have the integral of p1 to p2 of dp over p equals our constants minus m g over r, and then our integral uh, from z1 to z2 of dz. Now substituting this for t, we put this down here the rate of decrease times z minus z1 plus t1. Now before we integrate, we have to remember that this is our line right here. If we substitute z1, what do we get? This is 0, we get t1. If we substitute z2, what do we get? z2, that's how we got t2. So if we substitute into this part down here, z1, we get t1. If we substitute into this part down here, z2, we get t2. This is a relatively easy integral that we know how to do, but it's the same as this one over here, except that we need to use a substitution. But dp over p is ln of p. When we substitute p2, we'll have ln of p2 minus ln of p1, which is simply ln of p2 over p1. We have our constants here, minus m g over r. Now, let's look at this just for a minute. This is an integral of the form dx over ax plus b. And when you do this, you find that it's 1 over a ln of ax plus b. So we have to divide by this coefficient here. That coefficient is this coefficient. And so we have 1 over the rate of decrease. And then we have ln of this, which is ln of this. And then we substitute our two limits of integration, just like we did here. So we have ln of this with z2, which gives us t2, over ln of this with z1, which gives us t1. And this is the solution to our integral. On to our last part where we get our solution. So now we are finally at part five where we want to calculate what was asked of us, the temperature, the barometric pressure, and the percent decrease in maximum power at Vail Pass. We have these results so far, including T2 in Kelvin. So the first thing we want to do is make T2 in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. Those are easy conversions, so we'll just write down the answers. T2 is 17.8 degrees Celsius, which is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that, we're done calculating the temperature. This is at Vail. The barometric pressure, that means we're looking for P2. and then we're using our differential equation that we solved in the previous step. You have to kind of know how to manipulate logarithms. The first thing is that this part here becomes the power, the exponent here. And then we have ln of this equal to ln of this to this power, and the lns cancel. When the lns cancel, we're left with p2 over p1, which makes p2 equal to P1 we multiply on that side, P1 times, and now we have T2 over T1 here to this power. So that's minus mg 
over R, and we will just put this little R pink in there, which is this. And when we calculate all that out, we get 68,691 pascals, which makes sense. It's decreased from 82,884. Let's put that in millimeters mercury. So we would multiply it by 760 and divide by 10 to the fifth and get 522 millimeters mercury. And then simply do a conversion to inches. We get 20.5 inches mercury, which makes perfect sense. We reduced from 24.8 inches of mercury to 20.5 inches of mercury. So pick any of these as your answer to the pressure. And the last thing we need to do is find the percent decrease in maximum power. Now remember that in order to find a percent decrease, a percent change, we always take the new value minus the old value divided by the old value times 100%. Now this is for power. We don't know the powers. The percent decrease in power is the same as the percent decrease in air density. So instead of P2 and P1, we put in rho 2 and rho 1. And we know how to calculate rho from P and T. So what do we get? Rho 1 equals P1 M over R T1. So we substitute P1 and T1, M and R, 0 0.964. And rho 2 equal to P2 M over R T2, which gives us 0 0.823. So substituting these two into this, we would have 0 0.823 minus 0 0.964, that's negative notice, over 0 0.964 times 100% which works out to minus 14.5%. So the percent decrease in maximum power is minus 14.5%. So the answer to the last part of this problem is minus 14.5%. And that is that.